Hey everybody, it's Christmas Eve. Happy holidays. My family and I, we just opened the presents, had a great time, uh, stayed COVID safe. So hope everyone is safe, happy, and healthy. Uh, this video is gonna be a quick one. I had to learn a skill that I didn't really wanna learn, which was how to make renders. And it took me quite a bit of time in Marmoset Toolbag 4 to make my renders. I want to be able to pass on to you how to make renders in about 10 minutes that are basic, but good enough. So if you're a merchant selling figures, you need to make some renders of your STLs, or even if you're a creator and you need to make renders, this will teach you how to do it. And this is in Marmoset Toolbag 4. This is not an ad for Toolbag 4. Um, when I searched for how to make renders, Toolbag was the cheapest product I, that I found personally that looked like it was really good. Because um, a lot of people recommend the key shop, but I think it was like $1,000. So Toolbag 4, I think is, I think it was $300 for a perpetual license, um, or you could do a subscription, I think for $14 a month, which means you can cancel, of course. Uh, and if you're a student, uh, I think it's only like $115 for the license. So it was the most reasonably priced of the paid programs that I could find. And I want to show people to save the hours it took me to learn how to do stuff, even watching some tutorials and stuff like that. I figured I would pass on how to do basic renders, even with a couple of lights, so a little bit. You can do some pretty decent lighting with what I'm going to show you. But I want to be able to show you how to do it in like 10 minutes. So this, this is going to be a really short video. Um, it's going to ignore almost all the features of Toolbag because there's almost like limitless features in this program. I'm still, even after having played around for 20, 30 hours, I'm barely even scratching the surface. So I'm trying to condense and pass on to you guys the most important things I learned to do as quickly as possible. So if you need to jump in and make some decent renders, this tutorial coming up should be allow you to make uh, pretty good renders of STL files. This is not for advanced users. Uh, trying to put together product shots and stuff like that. This is for 3D printing types like myself who might need to make some renders. So that's it. I don't want to waste time. We're going to jump right into Marmoset Toolbag 4 and I'm going to walk you step by step through making you know a pretty decent basic render. And then the last minute or two of the video, I'm going to show you how to add just another light or two to make a much better render and how to play with just a couple of sliders which control uh, how much light the model reflects um, based on the surface. And, and uh, well, I don't want to get into too much here. Let's, it's, it's easier to look at. It. So bear with me for 10 minutes, and I'm going to show you how to make a good basic render. Thanks. So here we are in Toolbag 4 by Marmoset. And when you open it up, you just get this gray screen, basically. So since we're just doing a quick hit on the render, uh, you can... We'll, first, we'll click the sky, which is basically this background light, and we're going to go to backdrop. You're going to change it from ambient sky to color. Then you can pick any color you want in a color selector you're not seeing here. Let's pick, we'll go with kind of like an off yellowish color, off whitish, I don't know. We'll go with a pale yellow creamish color. Um, so you can select any color, of course, you want in there. You can use background pictures, you can load your own stuff in, but for the purpose of this quick hit, we're just going to use a color. And the sky, which I clicked off there, if you click that off, there's no light on the scene, but you'll see what that looks like when we drop a model in. So drop a model and you can go to file import model and you're not seeing my drop down box, but there's import model, or you can click this square icon here. So click that. I am now, uh, it's not recording that second screen where I'm just selecting my werewolf two file. So that'll be loading in in a second. And we are on top of him. So we want to go to the transform button. So Werewolf is highlighted. There's a, a button underneath. You see a drop down menu transform. So we're going to hit that. Uh, position is fine. Scale is fine. We just need to rotate him. So I think rotating him on the, on the X axis uh, minus 90 degrees should put him upright. So let's go and rotate him 90 degrees. And hopefully that will put him up. Well, I'm going to, I think it's minus 90 actually. So let me go minus 90 and boom. Okay, there he is. Looking pretty good. Uh, two things, even though it's a super quick hit, um, 
main camera, okay, let, let me divert. When we go to the main camera, mouse wheel forward brings you in, mouse wheel back pulls you back. You can also use Alt and W, A, S, D, Q, and E to move, pan the camera around, up, down, left, right, closer, and further. Uh, you play with it for a few seconds, you'll get it. Again, that you have to hold Alt key down when you hit those uh, W, A, S, D, Q, E. Now, I click the werewolf, and from there, I'm going to click uh, rotation, which is the round circle here. There's rotate, scale, and move, basically. So what we're gonna do is, I don't like this pose, I wanna see him a little bit from the side. So what we're gonna do is, whoops, I hit the move button first. Now, scale, this is what I want. You can go down and turn this. I'm gonna use the horizontal one, because I just wanna move, you know, look at him from a different angle. I don't like this side, I think I'll go this side. Now, he's not in the center of the camera, so we can either move the camera or we can move the figure. So if we click on the move icon, we can move him, or I can, now I'm doing Alt W A S D to uh, center him by moving the camera itself. If I don't want to do that, let me move the camera back and I will move the actual figure. So that's your choice. You can move the figure or the camera. So let me move the figure now, centered him. Okay, works very nicely, easy to do. And now I'll turn off the sky. So you see with the sky off, the sky gives ambient light. With the sky off, He's dark. There's no light on him. So we need to shine light on him. So we're going to, well, first let me rotate him a little back the other way. Uh, what we need to do is we need to add lights to him. And I like to turn off the sky because I, it's harder to control for me the sky. So first thing is I don't want him to be, I don't want a white render. So you click the material on the right side. And then you go to the albedo or albedo, I'm not sure how you say it, you click the color. Now you're not seeing my drop down color menu, but you can now click any color you want for this material. So you wanna make them red, blue, purple, dark, whatever you wanna do. We're just gonna go for a shade of gray. So I'm just gonna, I'm clicking into the gray tones and just trying to find, you know, a darkness that I like that will feel will show off all the details when I light it up properly. And now you can see the light coming from the ambient light is kind of coming from above and behind him, which I don't want. I want to control the lights like I do in my photograph session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up adding a light to him. And we're going to add a light. Like if I'm photographing a mini, I like to have the light above and to one side. In this case, I'm going to choose the left side. So it's going to be above him and to the left side and a little bit in front of the figure. That's going to be my first light that we're going to look at so you can go to scene and add material and add a light or you can click the light bulb icon so now the light appears right in front of you right where you can see it so now you can drag this around just in the same way you could drag the figure around or you can just type in values so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this light to where i would for normal photo purposes but i'll show you something else first and also you can control the color of the light by clicking the button so here i gave him a red tone just something you can play around with if you want to again, but because it is a quick hitter, I don't want to get too in depth into messing around the color of the light. Just wanted to show you it's one of the, I mean, there's a zillion functions in this Marmoset tool bag, but we're just going to keep the color white for now. That's easiest. Now we want it to cast shadows. It's my main light. So I want it to cast shadows. You can control the brightness. You see, if you go down, it's basically off. If you go too far, you'll white out the figure. And now what I want to do is I want to position it. So like I said, I want to move this light up. I want to move it to the left and then I want to move it uh, in front of the figure. It's a little in front of the figure now, but for this part, I'm going to, I'm actually going to use my X, Y, and Z controls works in 3d, just like a 3d graph would. So if you see, I type in a different position for the light, it moves it. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to end up moving that light back a little bit, but let's say I want the Y, which is the height. I want it higher. Now you see it jumped out of the picture. It's up there. And then for the, I think for the Z is okay. I want to move it more to the left though. So I'm going to type a value in that moves it further to the left. Now my light's in good position, above, in front, and to the left of my figure. So I turn the light off, the sky, so I can see what my light is doing. And I'm going to leave the sky off when I do my render. Sky is done for me. So I like this lighting position. And I'm going to play around with the brightness till I feel like it's, it's giving the details and casting some nice shadows. And... You can use this. Now for simple render, we're done. You just click the render. And what you do is you look at the output file, which right now is going to my desktop. 
which is where I don't want it to go. And then you click on the browse and then it's probably not showing you my drop down boxes right now, which is fine. What I'm doing is just selecting the end point where I want this file to go. Once I do that and click it, that is where when I say renders, they will all go to the same file. It's very handy. So you obviously won't need to know where everything's going. You don't just want it on your desktop. So once I have that all set to go, I like to bump up uh, the resolution. So here I'm highlighting, I, I have now set it to, uh, to go into the file where I want. And instead of a PNG, I'm probably gonna do a JPEG. Okay, so I'll switch it to JPEG there for the format. I bumped up the resolution, so it'll, it'll hold up better if I zoom in later in Photoshop or if I wanna mess with it a little bit. So now, uh, you know, you hit render and boom, it renders, that's it. You're, you've done a simple render in just a few easy steps. You don't really need to even know much of what you're doing. Now, for a, just a mildly, mildly more advanced thing, what I would like to really do is, and here I'm actually doing the render. It only takes a couple seconds. So what I really want to do though, is to make it just, even though it's a quick hit, I want to make it a little better. In photography, when we have a main light on one side of a person or an object, we normally want to put a light on the opposite side to fill in those shadows a little bit and show you a little more of the detail you might be missing if you just leave it in dark shadows. If you like the dark shadows look, then you don't have to mess with this. But I, I tend to think it's really good to uh, add a second light in. So let's, let's take a look at what that looks like. So now I've got my second light. Now what I want to do there is I'm going to hit move and I just want to pull it a little to the right, to the opposite side of my other light. And you can see he's fully illuminated now because of this. But now I want to do, I want to dial the brightness. This down is a secondary light. So I want to dial the brightness pretty far down. So just adding a little highlights and showing a couple things that might be hidden by the shadow if I didn't bother to do this. So I think personally, as someone who does photography, this, this what we call fill light, the second light, softer light off to the side, I actually think is critical to getting a good look. And when I photograph my minis that I, you know, people always say they like the pictures of my minis, it's because I use multiple lights on the minis of different strengths. I don't just use a light box that's filled with light. I always have one side stronger than the other to help bring out the details and create some shadows. If you do a proper light box, it's usually shadow less, which is for me bad. I think it's bad to, to, to take pictures of minis where you don't get any shadows. Now what I'm doing over on the right, the roughness of the, of the figure, if you wanna mess with this, the roughness goes from very shiny and as you go up, it becomes very matte. The surface gets a little rougher and it's not reflecting the light. So depending on what you want your final look, you can do, I dial the roughness about 25% of the way up, but you know, and, and then there's the metal in this setting. Go all the way up, it looks like metal, which is actually a pretty cool look, but I don't want that. But a slight bit of slide on the metal in this slider gives you some good reflection. So just play with that till you get the look that you want, whatever your personal preference is. Now, with just a few more seconds of playing around with just a couple little buttons, we're ready to make an even better render than we did the first time. So we click render and we're going right back down to render image. It's going right into that same folder we were in before. And now we've got what I would call a slightly fancier render. So you can see this, this is really quick and easy to do. And you don't really need to know much of anything. There's a million billion like functionality things in Toolbag for advanced users. But if you just want to do renders of STLs that you have, whether it's because you're a merchant or even you're a creator, um, you can really do these renders quickly. And by loading in whatever background you want, you can also take it to the next level very quickly and easily without really knowing much about this program or what it can really do. So that's it. I just want to give you guys a quick way to make these renders. Uh, you know, you're, you're seeing how nice they look. And like I said, there's, there's so many ways you can play with it. And if you play with this program, you can learn a lot. And I might do some more tutorials for people who are not going to be pro renderers, but you want to make nice renders. So uh, thanks for checking this out. I hope this helps you guys out a lot. And a happy 3D printing and 3D rendering, I guess, everyone.